Hello. Yes. It's time. It's time for another episode of the Uerman murder trial. I'm Glenn. I'm your host, a former criminal defense attorney for 33 years. And there was no uh, podcast for the last three weeks because there was no worthwhile developments in the Uerman case. But there is now. Uh, we are at the 16th of January, and what happened was Uerman today was charged with the fourth murder that he's going to be charged with. And there are many more. There are six other cases that he's being uh, examined for by the, by the grand jury, but in this case... It was the one with the cutest smile looking back at the camera. Her name is her name was Maureen Brainerd Barnes. She was, in case you're uh, an avid devotee of the podcast, she was the one who had her guy, and we still don't know what exactly his relation was, but him follow her out to the car to see who was the ogre that had been pursuing her and pushing her into going out with him, even though she had told him about a million times she didn't want to. And uh, she should have listened to her instincts. And today's announcement was followed by another horrible Gloria Allred. Uh, She's just awful to watch and just an embarrassment to us attorneys that she hogs every shot. Any she she finds people who should not even be part of the case. Like today was the daughter of somebody who was murdered. Why would she be in court for absolutely no purpose today? All that was was an arraignment. You don't drag your witnesses into court, but it is Gloria's way of getting on camera. So. There she was today, even though, of course, her her client, the young lady, explaining how she was only seven years old when uh, her mother was killed, and she's trying to explain it on the microphone, and you can see Gloria's trying so hard to get her face in front of the victim. Gloria, every shot where she's with a client, you can see she's doing everything she can to get in front of the client and to get into the shot. And, of course, that distracts the attention away from the actual person who there shouldn't be a shot, but if there is a a picture to show the audience at home, well, it should be of the victim, not of their attorney. Victims in cases like this don't even need attorneys. And, yes, I know the way that... Gloria fights those accusations because they're inarguably true. She just goes into the, everybody's entitled, everybody's allowed to have an attorney. Well, everybody's allowed to have a lot of things. That doesn't mean they should have them. You know, everybody's entitled to have a uh, one-gallon Sunday, chocolate Sunday. But it's not good for you. You don't need it. But yes, you legally can have it. Well, that's the same with having an attorney if you are the victim of a crime. You don't need an attorney if you're a victim of a crime. That's part of the process of the state go proceeding with the, the uh, allegations against the defendant. So... Very disappointed on that. But Maureen Brainerd Barnes is now named as the fourth victim. It's a shame it took this long. But what they did, the police, is they gathered DNA from his, Rex's family. And then they matched. It took a while to get that. But they, the daughter got on a uh, train and she threw her drink can into the trash. And with that, they got her DNA, and with that, they could match it up and find some of the DNA on Miss uh, Brainerd Barnes was from somebody very close to the daughter. It looks like the belt that they found, they have now, there was a belt found among his things, and it looks like it matches an impression in Marine Brainerd Barnes' uh, body. 
but it's not certain at this point who the belt actually would belong with. Does it belong to Rex or to his wife? And uh, there's, I, I've watched on the interwebs that there's some chatter going around about, oh, if there's anything, the, the wife should be uh, arrested too. No, at this point, they've done something they hadn't done before. We're talking about by they, I mean the police. What they've actually done is they've made a chart about when did all of the killings transpire, uh, at least the four that we've heard about at this point, and each of the children and the wife, where were they at the time of the crimes? And Rex for reasons we can only surmise. <laughs> he did his uh, activities that he's accused of, if he did them. He did them when his wife and daughter were out of town. So there's n not going to be any allegations, uh, extremely unlikely that there will be any allegations against them. Is it possible? Could somebody come up with a, uh, they helped him set up the incident, they helped him dispose of uh, evidence that in you know indicated he had had something to do with the crime? It's always possible, but those are real long shots. But it is something you could argue. Does the fact that they were always out of town when he did his handiwork, is that evidence that they knew something was going on? It could go either way. It could be evidence they didn't know because, hey, we just went on vacation and, you know, we didn't know anything was going on. Who in the world's going to suspect that your father's a, a serial killer? But it can be looked at the other way where if somebody has the time and the trouble to go through it, uh, say uh, you made all of these preparations and you had to be out of town on a certain day at a certain time and there was it was so important for him to have you gone you knew he was up to something and yet when you came back and you asked him what'd you do he didn't say anything so you knew he was up to something that he couldn't talk about you noticed that furniture in the house had been moved and that the house had been cleaned so you knew something had been going on and Every time, every time you'd go on vacation, there would be signs that the house had been altered in some way. So it's a real long shot. It's a real long shot, but it's it's not impossible. I'm sure Gloria Allred will get her face in the TV uh, on that too, possibly. She'll be defending uh, the furniture in the house or the doorbell. So um, that's it. Uh, there, <clears throat> there will be a new episode because there's, uh, there is very important news coming out uh, about this case next week. It has to do with the police and their involvement and their knowledge about who was involved long before these four women uh, were brought, the, were, were, their murderers were brought to justice. Murderer, singular. So, it, uh, in other words, next week there looks like there's going to be some evidence about members of the police department that were in, can't say cahoots, that would have a legal implication, but that were extremely friendly with Rex and were receiving favors from him in the nature of invitations to sex parties. So that's going to be the episode next week. I'm looking forward to it because I've got a lot of allegations without substantiation, so that we can't make them this week. But it looks like we'll have some substantiation from a witness that was there and who doesn't really want to testify, but she's going to do it. And uh, when that happens, we'll be able to say, okay, the following officers were charged with having been friends with Rex and having also been to him sources of information from inside the department as to who were they looking at, what were they looking at, what evidence did they have. Ooh, that's interesting. You know, it reminds me of a, of a story that uh, still <laughs> still chills my blood a little, but uh, there was, now this is long ago, there was a similar 
serial killer loose down on the other coast. And you've probably heard of him. Uh, he was uh, killing people by going into their house and while they were sleeping. Some he would shoot while they were sleeping. Some he would stab while they were sleeping and others he would intentionally wake up so that they could see him and he would torture them and then shoot them. And he was the night stalker. And he just recently died. Thank you. Thank God. And one of the interesting things was uh, my father, who also had a lot of friends who were in the police, I told him, you know, like everybody else, uh, I told him that I was worried. I remember the night that everybody in this whole town of Los Angeles had their guns right out on the table next to them and ready to go because they thought they could be the next target. And it was really odd and surprising that my father said, no, you don't have to worry. And I, why is that? And he said, because he only goes for cream and beige colored houses that are right close to a freeway on ramp. Wow, I didn't know that. And it looks like that's true. So, you know, sometimes if you have a tap, as we'd say, you know, like tap a beer keg, if you have a tap where you can get information from in the police department, well, you know, you can sometimes get some really interesting, juicy information like that. And uh, since my father was in law school and law school is filled, at least the night school that he and I both went to at different times, uh, is filled with a lot of police officers who are looking to become uh, DAs or city attorneys, whatever. Uh, You can become friends with a lot of police. Coffee break, you know. So... Anyway, that's it for this week, and I will see you next week, and we will have some really juicy information on who is now being looked at and alleged to have been Rex's source of inside information from the police.